Okay, so good afternoon, Gail. How are you doing? I'm all right, Dawn. How are you doing? I'm doing good today. I'm excited because I've, you know, for a long while I've had this passion to want to share some of the things that I've been through to help other people. Because, you know, I've had a lot of ups and downs. I spent years with panic attacks and feeling stressed and feeling like there was something wrong with me. And when I found some natural strategies and techniques to help myself through that, I think I just want to share this with other children and with parents who may be struggling. Yeah, it's the simplest things that work best sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, nearly everything I do is natural. Because yeah. I do believe that we all have the ability within us to heal ourselves. And, you know, my, my passion is I'd love to impact the families. I want to help mums and dads to maybe work better or feel more comfortable working with their children and any challenges that come up. But I think if we can actually start working with our inner child and like talking to the inner dawn, you know, the young dawn who was feeling distressed and felt like she wasn't good enough, that can actually impact on the rest of my life. And, yeah. you know, my idea is to reach the children and people as young as possible. Yeah. And and sort of what parents do and say to their children impacts yeah. what they think that their self is about. Yeah, Because, Absolutely. you know, they are the roadmap in a way for their children. Yeah. And, you know, if children don't feel valued or worthy, then they won't stretch out and, and reach out and press the edges. And if they are pressing the edges, then it's really difficult, isn't it, as, an, as a parent or a significant other or a responsible person, if your children are really pushing your buttons yeah. um, to actually not go, go off on one yourself. But, but if you can try to do your best, and, you know, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't do, if it doesn't work out well and it ends up having a bit of a whoops-a-daisy moment, then I always found when I was bringing up my son that if I'd made an error, of yeah. judgment then as soon as I'd realized I'd done it and I'd got my own head wrapped it I would go along and say to him look I made a mistake there yeah. I, I shouldn't have said that or I said that badly or I upset you by saying that and actually that was a bit harsh because yeah. if we don't teach our children that we are fallible that then they won't understand that they're fallible you know, that yeah. they can get it wrong and that it's OK to say, actually, I made a mistake there. I, I did yeah. that wrongly. But, you know, I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings, but I, I was I was a bit upset myself yeah. because then we're showing them that that's OK to not be right all the time or, yeah. you know, because we all get it wrong, don't we? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, as a parent, it's important to be authentic and say if you're having a bad day. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and often... You know, I'm going from the experience of a young child I was working with last week. He said, um, he said, can I ask you a question then? Because I said to him, what's troubling you? I could tell something was on his mind. It didn't feel like a huge thing, but I knew there was something niggling at the back of his head. You kind of get that feeling when kids are kind of trying to hide something, aren't they? Yeah. Anyway. They're not very good at it, are they, usually? Yeah. Well, he was looking down and I felt like something was going on. So I asked mummy if she'd wait outside because this obviously was something to do with mummy. And he said, is it acceptable? And we're talking about a seven-year-old child. He said, is it acceptable that mummy keeps telling me that I'm useless? And I'm like, okay. Well, it's not I, ideal, is it? No. And, <laughs> you know, for me, that just, that one statement that he said was kind of reference to things I've been through, reference to people, you know, I've worked with in the past, yeah. how easily that influence on a seven-year-old child will start impacting on how he feels about himself and yeah. the way he perceives himself in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And if no one ever tells him anything differently, That's what at what think. stage does he start believing it's true? Well, I think that, you know, you're in the cocoon of your family and they are the people that govern you, aren't they? And they're the people that show you yeah. what life is. Yeah. And if they, whatever they show you, you think that everybody's life is like that when you're a child. Yeah. You think that everybody's household is like your household. Yeah. And then you step out of your household and you realise that not everybody's household is like your household. And that can be either a revelation yeah. of, for good or a revelation that frightens you. Yeah. And you, when you're a small person, you, you haven't quite you don't have all the skills you need yet yeah. to sort it out and yeah. sometimes you need a trusted big person 
to run it past because they've yeah. been there longer and they may have seen that and you know they yeah. may have a bit of help for you but when you're little um you, you haven't you know you're not very big you haven't been around very much you haven't got a lot of inside stuff to call on and that no. makes it hard I think when you when yeah. you're little and you it don't does. have all the answers I mean let's be honest you don't have all the answers when you're big either do you let's be fair no. but uh, no. you've got all the things that you can kind of bend around to fit but when yeah. you're little you don't have those things yes and also you've got nothing to measure against no one's no. If no one's told you an alternative no how do you measure that how do you process if it's right or wrong yeah, you, it's it like just starts to become your belief yeah it's like playing a video game with, with no controller isn't it you, yeah. you can't you can't do it you just yeah. can't do it because you don't know what you're doing yeah and uh and sometimes when parents say things that upset you it's because they've lost their controller and they don't know what they're doing either at that yeah. time yeah. because you know it, it can strike all of us however tall we are and however old we are at any given moment can't it really yeah absolutely and I, this is the way i covered it with this young child i just said to him why do you think mommy said that and he said i don't know perhaps i am and that was kind of Sad, i thought suddenly he wasn't saying it was behavior was that he was saying i am useless mm -hmm. and you know one of the important things i've actually realized with children is how vulnerable they are oh yes and if we keep saying you're stupid or you're not good enough or you wouldn't amount to anything or you've got a problem or a disability or a learning problem they will live to that expectation yeah instead of recognizing just how what a beautiful person they are and that is just one aspect of them mm. and, and i would say oh sorry Lee. and also that little naggly voice you have in the back of your head that we all have yeah. Um, when you get older, if something goes a bit wrong in your day, then that little naggly person comes out and says all of those unkind things that people have said to you that have kept you locked there. That comes out when you're having a bad day and just yeah. reinforces it. And it, it's really, you know, it, it we are kind of captive, aren't we, by our own little inner voice. And that's that's yeah. a shame because that can be set so early and yes. takes so much unknitting it's yeah. phenomenal it's a life's work to unknit that isn't it can it? be yeah it yeah. took me a lot of years to undo what someone had said to me when i was a child in fact mm. several people said to me yeah and it can be a throwaway remark yeah. it can be a throwaway remark that you yeah. hear more than a couple of times and you hook into it because you're feeling a little bit sad or a little bit upset yeah. or you know whatever that is and, and it's okay to feel sad and upset sometimes because that's the proper way to feel about that thing yeah, isn't it absolutely. when you're little you uh, or young or you you haven't experienced that thing before and i mean you could be like 37 and not have experienced that yeah. thing before yeah. you know you experience it in a, a sort of a childlike way it kind of all of that monster nonsense that's whiffling in the back of your head telling you you're not good enough will come to to the front because it's like you're vulnerable and your own inner self is kind of sabotaging you and yeah. making yeah. you feel worse and that's yeah. you know that's that's the mountain we all climb isn't it really yeah. Absolutely. And I would say for the moment, just a little bit of advice for anyone who's found themselves in that place where they're judging themselves or they're feeling they're not as good as they think they should be. Take a little time out, first of all, to, to praise yourself for how far you've got and be kind to who you are right now. And then maybe take a stage further and write down and take time to do this because it will take time. You know, if I said to you, Gail, tell me 10 things about you you don't like, you'd be like, eee, here flash, we go. A in string an absolute of them. flash. Yes. Yeah. But if I asked yourself or a child or even a parent or, you know, someone who's gone through a little bit of life to uh, give me 10 good qualities about themselves, that does take a little longer. Oh, gosh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So much long longer. Yeah. yeah. And you and might if, not get 10. You know, you uh, might aim for 10 and get three. But, you know, those Absolutely. are three really good things. Yeah. yeah, because our mind tends to remember things which are negative because we have an them. emotional attachment to them. Yeah, and amplify them. Yeah. yeah, so if you know, maybe for today, you think of one good thing about yourself. So for me, I love the fact I've got blue eyes. I don't know why I like blue eyes. Okay. Um, I like the fact that... Um, so, and your mind will go off on a tangent. It will oh, yeah. actually say, oh, I don't know what else to say. 
I love the fact that I love people. I love the fact that I like helping people and I make people smile. Yeah. So those are three things for me that I really like about myself. Okay. And if you ask me, yes, I could give you more, but just be kind to yourself today and think of something now think it's often a bit later in the day like when you make someone smile or you hold mummy's hand and you feel happy about that that's a good thing and as you start thinking about those nice things and write them down these are the things that we're going to be looking at when we need to work through the stuff that isn't so good because we need to look at that balance that comes in that negative that big, big pile of manure we've got to call it <laughs> comes in all of those old thoughts which makes us feel sad comes in because often they're other people's opinions of us yeah. and then we and take they them on they're board not, they're not right are they no. they are they are not the right thing because but, only we know what they're really yeah. like yeah absolutely and they're not real a lot of the time no we are not what we think yeah we are not absolutely. what we think our thoughts are not us we are something other than our thoughts yeah. But what We're happens? Thinking about Gail? thought, we just stop thinking that bad thought. Think yeah. about that happy thing, that thing that makes us happy. You know, yeah. be it a flower or something or someone or tickling your cat or whatever yeah. it is for you. Yeah, and that gets you through that lump, yeah. that lumpy bit. Yeah. If we can start that process of just looking at good, then we can help you heal the rest. Mm, absolutely. And we can just work on a process where we work through as like, why do you call yourself that? Why do you think that? And each of those little things are just one little piece to work with. And so, you know, just take a little time today over this day. Just write down some good things about yourself. If a not good thing about yourself or an unhappy thing about yourself comes in, write that down, but put it on another page. Because yeah. we don't want to look at that today because it's not true. We'll look at that tomorrow or we'll look at that another day when we've actually found all the good things about you because that's because who you really are because that bad thing there'll be an opposite thing yeah. in your good pile without a shadow of a doubt yeah absolutely and if we can actually look at all the good bits within you you'll start to feel good in yourself you'll start recognizing what a beautiful person you are absolutely yeah. yeah often what happens and i've you know i've seen this so many times and i know i did it myself when i was unhappy i'm sure at some stage i took it out on my kids Oh, yes, I think we all do. Or my ex, whoever was in my yeah, life at that time. We yeah. take out those horrible things on people we love because we know that they're not going to abandon us. Yeah, absolutely. And that's bonkers, isn't it? Because those are the very people that we should be yeah. being the nicest to, really. It's, there's a strangeness about that, isn't there? I know, I know. That is, that's crazy, but it's a safety net, I suppose. Yeah, we know we're safe to do that because yeah. we know they're not going to hurt us. Yeah. Or we hope but, they're not going to hurt us. Yeah, but what we don't realise is the impact sometimes those words have. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, children, uh, you know. Children can be crushed so quickly by things that we just make as a throwaway remark. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lifetime of unknitting after that, I think. Absolutely. And, you know, there's something I'd like to talk a little bit more about, you know, when we do our workshops, is like the impact of words on people. Mm. And... For you know, for me, if somebody had said when I was young, I've got a learning problem, maybe that would have made my life easier. Maybe it wouldn't have, because sometimes we need something to work with. You know, we need a baseline to work from. But I thought I was something wrong with me because I couldn't remember things. It wasn't until I was 40-ish, in fact, over 40, I actually figured out it was my brain is wired differently. Yeah. Now, whether it would help me to have that that label for want of a better word or not i don't know but let's be honest and say this is where we've got to start today we need a foundation where we can put something in place where we actually know who you are and from there we can then start unraveling all the bits that don't belong to you yeah and leaving them somewhere you know writing them down yeah. and yeah. turning them into writing them on a bit of paper and making them into a little boat and then sailing them down a river yeah so that they've sailed off and you can wave them funny old things that have been bugging you goodbye, whether you're, you know, three or 33 or 333. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can wave, you can actually tangibly see it going away. I yeah. think that works quite a lot, I think, with people, a bit of visualisation of it floating off. Yeah, seeing it going away. Or for me, I imagine putting them in a little bundle and putting them in a fire. Yeah. And they disappear. 
So, you know, we will work with that. And I've got lots of little visualization and meditations that I'd like to work with, you know, on another day. And also the other thing I'd like to work with is forgiveness. So I think that's a separate issue right on its own. And I'm trying to keep these short because it's a lot to process when you start. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, start working on forgiveness of yourself Mm. and recognizing, first of all, that you can. So you can forgive and it's okay to let go. You don't need to hold on to those feelings when you feel unhappy or those feelings that have made you feel unhappy. Because tomorrow they'll be in an entirely different place. Yeah. Don't yeah. They? You know, you have a little bit of a sleep and you wake up and the next day you're on a new new day and a different journey. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're, we're doing, Gail. Okay? We're, we're just peeling away layers at the moment, just like an onion. We're peeling away the outer layers so we can get to the centre of who you really are. And each day as you wake up, you count those blessings. Oh, and, absolutely. That, and they can yeah. be something very simple or something yeah. quite complicated, depending on how you think about yourself in the world, really. Yeah, but it's absolutely. to please, it, this is the thing that you do to, to please yourself, to make yeah. yourself happy. Absolutely. for anybody else's benefit it's for your own benefit you don't have to say it out loud you don't have to tell anybody if you don't want to they're just those things that you wake up and you have a little think about something that makes you happy and then that sets your day up better yes absolutely and from there we find out who you really meant to be okay so thank you so much for sharing today gail and what i'd love to do is i think we'll finish the recording now because i think that's a lot to process and lots to think about Oh, yeah, be kind, be gentle to yourselves. And whatever you do today, remember, if it feels heavy, if it feels sad inside, there's something to change. And we can work on that naturally. We can help you through that. Yeah, you don't need expensive stuff. You just need, you know, yourself. Yeah, you need yourself. You, you and have just, all yeah. you need inside you to make yeah. you better. Yeah, you just need an understanding of how to turn it around. So thank you so much, Gail, and I look forward to our next little chat. Okay. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much, love. Bye. Bye. Bye.